Welcome to Careless Coder. Today we give what the people ask for. Programming Simon on the Pi Pico using Zig. Motherfucker! So the other day I sent out a poll whether we should implement Simon in fourth or Zig. And the joke was on me because this weekend I actually implemented in fourth and I figured that the fourth video being so recent the majority would be for fourth, but no, it's Zig. Now I could behave like any Western politician and just ignore the voice of the majority, but I'm a true libertarian at heart. I believe at the voice of the majority. So last night I implemented Simon in Zig, and in the coming four videos we'll actually go and build it. Today we will set up the hardware. Get the hell, I cannot do that Dave, installed so that we can use it. Hell stands for hardware abstraction layer. And we make sure that our outputs, the LEDs works by making that Knight Rider scanner. And then we will in the next video make the Simon logic and then the user logic and then we build it up in four episodes. Otherwise it would be very, very long. Although the code in completion is only 230 plus lines. So it's not really that bad. Now I am worried though, since we're making a clone of Simon, Milton Bradley MB is bound to sue me if you call it Simon. So I need to call it something else. So what would be an appropriate name? Mm. So basically you're following a leader mindlessly like a sheep that always gets problems. Mm. How about Adolf? Let's call it Adolf. Then again, that's not politically correct, right? Uh, Mao? Mm -hmm. No, let's call it Ziggy. Although in all honesty, in the videos I call it Simon. But at the end, we will call it Ziggy because I don't want to get sued. So let's jump in and have some fun, yeah? With Zig and the Raspberry Pi Pico. So before we start, we need to set up this uh, hardware abstraction layer and a nice build script. Now, if you're eager to start right away and not doing it yourself, just clone my repository. I already updated the Raspberry Pi RP2040 build script to just uh, build Simon. I deleted the examples, but I think it's good to know that you can go to uh, Raspberry Pi, right, this one. I basically cloned this and deleted the examples and updated the build.zig. So I only build uh, my own stuff. I advise you to also look in these uh, examples. I actually learned a lot, especially PWM, that's a bit uh, complex. I also had a bit of a fight in fourth to get it working. So I basically just uh, use this script and you learn a lot by just watching these examples. You go like, oh, okay. Um, this hardware abstraction, by the way, it's kind of cool. And we're going to use it actually for the PWM. But other than that, we will be using the low level pins, a GPI num, because then we can actually do arithmetic between the LEDs and the switches and uh, the move. And the Simon move is basically, we have four options, zero, one, two, three, four. And we have the LEDs connected to pins two, uh, three, four, five, the switches six, seven, eight, nine, and the piezo to ten. So in that case, we can actually do arithmetic to derive them, and that's a bit more convenient than using names. Uh, makes your code a bit smaller. Uh, makes it a bit harder to change when you change, of course, your pin numbers. It's always a bit of a trade-off. But let's uh, show you how I connected my Raspberry Pi. If you connect yours like that, the same outputs, the same inputs, you will be golden and we can uh, test the setup. So let's show the uh, hardware setup. So this is the schematic. We have our Raspberry Pi Pico and we connect four LEDs through resistors, 470 ohm. The yellow you may want to use 220 ohm because the forward voltage is a bit uh, higher. So it will uh, light up a bit brighter. And then we have uh, the push buttons. We will use the internal 
pull-up resistors of the Raspberry Pi Pico or the RP2040 as it's better known so that if we close that switch there is a resistor basically here in series uh, but then on the inside of the chip that way uh, you don't short out the power supply and then on pin 10 we have a uh, 1 kilo ohm resistor and a piezo speaker that will generate the sound and basically it will look like this on a breadboard so we have the four LEDs and the four 470 ohm resistors in my case that's what I said I noticed that this one is a bit dimmer the yellow one and the four push buttons all connected to ground and then here we have the piezo with that uh, one kilo ohm and this connects to my switch and this is kind of uh, convenient because this USB uh, switch has push buttons so when we need to load we need to press the select uh, button so I can just toggle that switch on and off and then it will automatically mount and we can copy uh, the UF2 image onto the Pi Zero. <laughs> I already developed it so, so let's uh, see if we can actually uh, make these light up in a nice little pattern. Right, so let's first import our standard library that also is uh, required here, which is a bit large to be honest, but yeah, I will do an experiment to see if we can actually get rid of it, uh, I wonder. And then we need to uh, ins uh, get our micro zig for the embedded uh, stuff, import. The micro zig. Then we need to get our uh, hardware abstraction RP2040. I don't think we're actually going to use it, but let's uh, get it anyways. From uh, hell, I cannot do that, Dave. All right, and uh, let's import the time so we can sleep for a couple of milliseconds. That's something that we will be doing quite a lot. Usually you want to refrain from sleeping milliseconds, uh, especially in parallel processes or stuff that seemingly works together. So you have one uh, LED blinking fast and one LED blinking slow. If you block it with a, a time sleep, well, the other one will also stop. So usually you don't want to do it this way. But since Simon is a very synchronous game we can actually do time sleep all over the place which makes it a lot easier and otherwise the Pi Pico also has uh, multiple cores so you could theoretically multitask anyways we're going to use that time here to uh, sleep for a couple of milliseconds every now and then time and let's import the most important GPIO and like I said we could use that nice pins abstraction pins configuration but then you will have to deal with names and I want to deal with the numbers because it's easier to add and uh, subtract from numbers or use for loops with numbers than it is with names all right so let's do what we usually do it also in other embedded systems is uh, create a setup where we actually set up the ports so let's loop we know that we have to go from port what was it again where is my keycat two three four five so two to six because six is excluded in a for loop so two to six and let's uh, capture the r for that now the gpio num takes an integer and this gives a uh, size or u8 so we need to cast that so let's make a far i it's a u5 and we will truncate this is a standard uh, function within zig it's extended library so it will look for this type and it will just truncate whatever bits are in front of it to make it a u5 so now we can actually use num the num i so this is the port that we actually going to set so we start off with port 2 and we want to set this set function as a uh, as an uh, gpio co 
and we want to actually make this an output so we copy it we make it out and we change function into direction and if you want an uh, in then it becomes a dot in which we will do later in the other uh, lesson we have the switches okay so we basically have now set up all these uh, four ports as outputs that's what we wanted so let's do a public function main so it can be called when uh, the turnkey the turnkey is a term in embedded for actually starting an application automatically you can find it so we do a setup so we set up all these ports and then let's do an uh, infinite loop well true easy peasy and then again we use four two to six we capture that r again we do the same trick we make it an i and we truncate the r and we make it a u5 of course u5 so now we can actually use it so we can do the gpio dot number to get that port number i and we can put it to a high and that is the function put and one that puts it to high and then uh, here we do that sleep so that we can actually see it blink because otherwise it's so wickedly fast especially on the pi pico at 125 megahertz it's really insanely quick hard to believe it's a microcontroller back in the 80s this for us was a supercomputer <laughs> it's unbelievable you can now buy a supercomputer for five dollars that's the only thing that's coming cheaper in this world all the rest is unaffordable now biden Biden economics, Bidenomics, they call it. <laughs> okay, and now we need to turn it off again. And let's uh, sleep again so that we can actually see the other LED pop up so they don't light up at the same time. Yeah. So now it will basically scan the LEDs from left to right. But let's also scan them back. So let's copy this. We need to do a bit of arithmetic here um, because we're going you don't have a uh, six to two for example that's not allowed in uh, in zig so you need to use a subtraction so in this case if we have port number six so we have one and we subtract six minus one is five. Yeah, that will work. Two, three. All right, and this will still work. So right now we need to do that five because we start at port five. Or uh, sorry, we end at port five. Here, two, three, four, five. So if you do five minus five, well, then we get zero. But in this case, five minus uh, three would be two so that would switch off that led or switch it on right and the same here then we can do the same thing five minus i let's save it and let's uh, build it see if we get an error terminal we're nicely in the build we do a zig build and of course there is an error there is always an error because I need to add a void here. And that compiled very quickly. So in the zig out bin, there should now be a file called Simon. Now we have a problem. We cannot upload this yet. Because uh, this is an elf binary. Identifying as an elf is one thing, but do you genuinely believe you are something other than human? And I identify myself as a brilliant engineer. That doesn't make it true. I, I do. Or maybe it does in some other universe. So we need to install a tool to convert uh, this one. All right, let's clone this. Let's not do the copy because for some reason that didn't work. So git, git 
clone. It's still a git. And I'm a git for not typing it correctly. All right. L2. I think it's just a make. Easy peasy, right. So let's copy this uh, to where it can be run always. Elf to UF2. Let's do it user local bin in my case. You can copy it wherever you want. And then we can actually just turn it into a uh, UF2 file. That was not my password. That was the password at my customer site. This is my password here. It's a drag. I have different passwords for everything. And there comes a point that I just don't know it anymore. So we need to put an L file in and we get a UF2 out. Well, easy peasy. So we can actually do that here. Elf to UF2, Simon. Oh, Simon, yeah. And then we want a Simon.UF2. So we should now have a UF2 file. Yeah, that's also a bit smaller. And now we need to upload it. So I will switch on and off the PyPico and hold the select button. And now it's over here, right? So we can actually copy this. Now, since we're going to do that a lot, let's uh, create a little copy command that we can just use error up. So we're going to CP this in my case, CP. And there it goes, my keyboard again. That it, uh, there is something seriously wrong with this. Either the keyboard or the Mac. There we go, it's back. Simon.uf2, we copied it to, uh, where is it mounted? Volumes, I think. Volumes, RPI. Yeah, so we just copy this. That is so much quicker. Uh, yes, you may do that. And there we go, it's working. Let me show you. So we now know that our LEDs are working, which is nice before we actually start with the other lesson. Then we know if we toggle these on and off, then we actually get some feedback. We're not worried about the switches yet. Do not, this is very important, do not press your switches when you have not enabled the pull-ups. You don't know in which state they are. So you need to set them into an input state with the pull-up just to be uh, safe. But we do that in a later episode. So do not be tempted to push it. I can show you that this is actually safe, but in any other microcontroller, that's just a guess. Uh, but I, I knew here that it's, uh, it's all right. So there you have it. We got the SIG tool chain with the hell. I cannot do that, Dave. And we started actually programming our output pins and we made the LEDs run like Knight Rider so that we know that at least the outputs work. And then in the next video, we will make a random sequence that Simon will reiterate over. So red, red, green, red, green, red, green blue for example red green blue and that way that is the basis of the game and then in the next episode we will do uh, switches etc so yeah i'm looking forward to this and you fourth lovers i will also do a video with fourth because that one is already implemented as well so the coming couple of weeks it's a lot of simon uh, adolf uh, ziggy 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 says so I hope you learned something and see you in the next one.